Chris here from Project Option, and in this video we're going to talk about the VIX term structure. Now some other phrases that are synonymous with the VIX term structure are the term structure of volatility and the VIX futures curve. So if you've heard any of those phrases before, you're going to learn what they mean in this video, and we're also going to talk about why they're important. So what is the VIX term structure? Well, the VIX term structure is the difference in prices between short-term and long-term VIX futures, or it's the difference in implied volatilities of near-term and longer-term expiration cycles. So there are three possible states for the VIX term structure. The first one is upward sloping, which is referred to as contango. Now, contango means that longer-term VIX futures are more expensive than near-term VIX futures. Now, this is the most common VIX term structure because Contango occurs when market implied volatility is really, really low. Now the next shape is downward sloping, which is referred to as backwardation. Now backwardation means that longer term VIX futures are cheaper than near term VIX futures. Now this shape is not as common because it typically only occurs when market implied volatility is really high. So if there's a severe market correction and you know the VIX spikes to 25, 30, or 50, the VIX futures curve is most likely in backwardation at that time. So since that doesn't really happen that often, backwardation is pretty rare. It only really happens 10 to 15 percent of the time. Now the last shape is flat, which just means that longer term VIX futures are approximately the same price as near term VIX futures. So here we're just visualizing what contango looks like. So this graph was taken on April 1st, 2016, and it shows the VIX index and then the five subsequent VIX futures contracts. So as we can see here, the VIX index was really low. It was right around 13. Now the April VIX future was between 15 and 16. Now if we go to May, we can see that the VIX future was just over 17. And if we go all the way out to August, we can see that the VIX future was at 19. So the VIX, the VIX index was at 13, and if you go all the way out to August, the VIX futures increased to prices around 19. So this is a upward sloping or contango VIX term structure. Now, why does this matter? Well, you need to understand that if you're trading volatility products in the form of VIX options, VIX futures, or short-term volatility products such as uh, VXX, UVXY, or XIV, you need to understand that the performance of those products and strategies is going to be tied to the performance of the short-term or the near-term VIX futures contracts. So if you watched our video on trading VIX options, you'll know that VIX options are actually priced to the corresponding VIX futures. So let's say you buy a April VIX call option with a strike price of 10. Now, when you buy that when you buy that option, let's say you bought it on April 1st, 2016. So in this example, the VIX index is at 13 and the April VIX future is at 15 and a half. It's likely that you paid around $5.50 for that April VIX call with a strike price of 10. Now, if the VIX index stays at 13 through the April VIX futures settlement, that April VIX future is going to decay in price towards 13. Now, since that 10 call option expiring in April is tied to the performance of the April VIX future, if that April VIX future goes from 15 and a half to 13, then it's likely that your your call option with a strike price of 10 expires to a value around three dollars. So since you bought it for 15 or five and a half dollars and it expired to three dollars, you lost two dollars and fifty cents per contract, and that's because the April VIX future decayed in price from 15 and a half to 13 while you owned a 10 VIX call option expiring in April. So when you bought the 10 call option, it had intrinsic value around five and a half dollars. And then when the April VIX future went from 15 and a half to 13, that 10 call option only had three dollars of intrinsic value. So you lost two dollars and fifty cents per contract because of the decay in VIX futures, which happens when the VIX term structure is in contango. So that's just one example. So to make a long story short, when the VIX term structure or VIX futures curve is in contango, bullish volatility strategies or products do not perform well if the VIX futures curve stays in contango. So on this slide we're looking at the VIX futures curve when it's in backwardation. Now backwardation means the curve is downward sloping. So as we can see here, the VIX index is around 27.5, the February VIX futures around 24.75, 
the March VIX future is around 24, and if we go all the way out to June, the June VIX future is around 23. So current implied volatility is around 27 and a half, while the longer term VIX future in June is around 23. So this is a downward sloping curve or a backwardation VIX term structure. So why does this matter? Well, if you're trading bearish volatility strategies, you need to know that if the curve stays in backwardation, those VIX futures contracts are going to increase in price towards the VIX index as their settlement date approaches. So let's say you're buying XIV. So if you don't know already, XIV is an ETN that holds short VIX futures contracts. So in this example, XIV would be holding short February VIX futures and short March, March VIX futures. So if the VIX index stays at 27 and a half, the February and March VIX futures contracts are going to increase in price towards 27 and a half. Now since XIV is short those VIX futures contracts, XIV is not going to perform well as those contracts increase in price. So just know that if volatility rises and you put on a bearish volatility trade, if the volatility remains high, your volatility trades are probably not going to perform well because most volatility products and strategies are tied to the performance of the near-term VIX futures contracts. Now, since those VIX futures contracts will be increasing if the VIX index remains elevated, those bearish volatility strategies or products are not going to perform well. So in this last example, we're just looking at a VIX futures curve that is relatively flat. So as we can see here, the VIX index is at 20, and basically February through June, the VIX futures contracts are around 21. Now, while this is technically a contango curve since the VIX futures are higher than the VIX index, this is a relatively flat curve compared to what you would see otherwise. All right, well, that pretty much wraps up what you need to know about the VIX term structure. So let's go ahead and recap what you've learned in this video. So first, the VIX term structure, or the VIX futures curve, represents the difference between the prices of short-term and long-term VIX futures contracts. Now, when the VIX term structure is in contango, Longer term VIX futures contracts are more expensive than near term VIX futures contracts. Now, when the curve is in contango, bullish volatility positions tend to lose money over time if the VIX does not increase. And that's because, as we talked about, bullish volatility trades are tied to the performance of near term VIX futures contracts. Now, when the curve is in contango, those VIX futures contracts are going to decay in price if the VIX does not increase, which leads to poor performance in bullish volatility trades. Now, when the VIX futures curve is in backwardation, near-term VIX futures contracts are more expensive than longer-term VIX futures contracts. So, when the VIX futures curve is in backwardation, bearish volatility positions tend to lose money over time if the VIX does not decrease. Now, that's because, as we talked about with Contango, the, the performance of volatility strategies and products is tied to the near-term VIX futures contracts. So, if the curve is in backwardation, those near-term VIX futures contracts are going to increase in price towards the VIX index if volatility remains elevated. Now, since those VIX futures contracts are increasing, bearish positions that are tied to the performance of those contracts are going to not perform well. Well, thank you so much for watching, everybody. I hope you learned something about trading volatility and why the VIX futures curve matters. If you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you get alerts when we come out with new videos.